Isn't it ironic how black men can cross-dress as black women and become more successful than them? You talking about class? You got a lot of nerve. If it wasn't for Tony, Tony, oh. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning back in. As you can see from the title and the thumbnail, you know what this video is about. But what prompted this video is, of course, Black Twitter had some discussion and it made me wonder, I'm like, are people too sensitive now? Or was this always a problem? Where did the change, where did the transition come where black men cross-dressing as black women became such a problem and so offensive to where everybody was like, oh, I never liked this, I never liked that. Apparently my cat wants to join in on the conversation too, but what brought this up is there's a popular comedian named Norman. He posts a whole bunch of skits, a whole bunch of funny videos, right? Recently, he posted a video of him wearing a fat suit. And basically, the character was a big, fat character, always hungry, always complaining. A lot of people got offended and were replying with things like, oh, you must be running out of jokes. This is so offensive. This is so lazy. A fat suit, a fat suit. And then people were like, why I get mad at him? Martin came out with Big Mama, House 1, 2, and 3. Y'all went to go see that. Tyler Perry then came out with like at least 12 different Medea movies. All those stage plays, those were a success. Medea, we gonna get into that later, was a huge thing that made him successful. He come out with a new Medea movie. It's gonna be number one on Netflix. The theaters is gonna be packed. So people were like, y'all love Medea and Big Mama House. Now this comedian wearing a fat suit is such a problem. Down like that, okay? The thing that got me was when people replied like, oh, that was offensive too. I never liked that either, Big Mama House, Medea, and then even bringing it back to when you had characters like Shanene and Jamie Foxx, Wanda, or like Professor Klump and the, his family characters that Eddie Murphy did for the Nutty Professor. A lot of people were saying like, they never found none of that funny. It was always offensive. It makes black woman look bad, it's degrading. And then it just made me think about all the different characters where black men, black men comedians would cross dress as black women just to be funny, just to be a character and how those characters always ended up becoming the most popular ones, right? Martin with Shanene, then he had Big Mama House. Then you think about Jamie Foxx with the character Wanda of In Love and Color sketches. How about, of course, Tyler Perry and Medea. Yeah, Eddie Murphy with the clumps playing all the different characters, the woman characters. Remember he played Respucia. I don't weigh no damn 300 pounds. I weigh 165. I'm gonna show you how a bitch go down a slide. When you think about all these black caricatures of women, black women that these black men comedians played, it was always in a negative light. Overly ghetto, overweight ignorant, always had to have a sassy attitude. This makes me think back to back in the day where it was the mammy trope, where it's like the southern, mostly dark skin, overweight black woman who was sassy, she could tell it like it is, but what was the difference? She was subordinate to white people. You know, she could sass and do this, but she knew her place. She was always subordinate to white people. But she had that sassiness that people like. She had that attitude that people like. She could cook real good, you know? This mammy trope was so popular. Back in the 30s, they had Gone with the Wind. Hattie McDaniel won. She won her first Oscar. The first black woman, first black person to win an Oscar in an acting role. She played a mammy in Gone with the Wind. Tom and Jerry from the 40s did a little skit of it. Hurry up, honey child. Land safe. Hurry up, honey child. Oh my God. Did you see that? I mean, when you have these cosplays of black women, these negative cosplays of black women being ratchet and ghetto and sassy. What do you want, Shanene? All I want to know is why Martin had a party and didn't invite me. I mean, I like the party. All right. And you see how famous how popular these characters are 
and you have all these people now saying, oh, I never found this funny, I never found this funny, this was always offensive, this just contributes to the negative stereotypes of black women being overweight, ghetto, especially dark-skinned women, ratchet, ignorant, too masculine in their own type of way, not attractive enough. You had the Shanene characters, you had the Jimmy Fox character, where, let's take a look. Some people like to play devil's advocate where it's like, there's been many white men comedians who have cross dressed as women for comedic effect, you know, for a role or whatever. You know, you had Tootsie, you had Mrs. Doubtfire with Robin Williams, even Some Like It Hot, Marilyn Monroe, where the two guys, they cross dressed as women to like fit in. Or, you know, that, it's those type of plots and skits where they got to cross dress and they obviously look like a man, but everybody else still thinks they're a woman. But the difference is with those cosplays with the white men dressing up as white women, it was never seen in a negative light compared to this. I just wanted to ask everybody watching, especially any black woman watching, do y'all get offended when y'all see these caricatures of black women played by black men comedians and they're always ratchet or overweight? or ignorant, or sassy? Or do you just take it as entertainment? It's just fun. You know, some people just say, like, you can think about it from a different perspective. It just shows their range as a comedian. You know, that's another role for them. That's another check for them. But when you really think about it, it makes me wonder. I'm like, you went through all the trouble and all the effort and all the extra money to go through the prosthetics and with the wigs and the lipstick and the dresses and the outfits when you could have just hired a black woman to play that role. But then again, it's like, okay, another black woman portraying that negative stereotype, that Tiffany Haddish stereotype, right? Or the overweight Southern woman who's sassy, who's family-oriented, that type, Big Mama House from Martin. You could have hired a real actress to play that. But instead, you'd rather go through the trouble and the time and the effort of putting on a fat suit, putting on prosthetics, putting on a wig. And it's like, hmm. Boy, you think about it, all of these characters have always became super successful. Tyler Perry, for example, built the whole empire off of the Medea character. You know, when he was struggling and he was doing this, doing that, he was doing his plays, they were doing okay. He introduced that Medea character, his career took off. The plays turned into movies, turned into owning his own studio, the biggest one in Atlanta. Or if not Atlanta, the biggest one in the country. I'm gonna bring this back to the pioneer of this. Flip Wilson had his own show in the 70s. He was a black comedian, black male comedian. He had his own variety show in the 70s, right? One of the first, or if not the first African-American to have and host his own variety show broadcasted across America. But what was the thing with him? His most popular character he played was a black, sassy woman, Geraldine. Even to the point where that character covered black popular magazines like Jet and Ebony. Just imagine that. You're a black man making history, hosting your own variety show. And this is in the 70s where you still got a long way to go. But the most popular character you do becomes when you cross-dress as a black, sassy woman. Even to the point where that's who the magazine wants on the cover. A black magazine, a black man hosting your own show. They want you to cross-dress because that's your most popular character. And it came to the point where he got tired of the character. He got tired of Geraldine. And he wanted to retire the character. But that's the thing. In some aspects, the cross-dressed character becomes more successful and more popular than them themselves. In some ways, they feel like their identity is lost to that cross-dressed character as a sassy black woman that so many people love, that so many people find so funny. And you know, another thing I found funny, Tyler Perry, in some aspects, got tired of the Medea character. And yeah, I remember like two, three years ago where he said he was gonna kill Medea off, he's tired of Medea, he was gonna retire Medea only for him to come back out with a Netflix movie doing this. Another point, another topic 
with this discussion that people say is that with some of these black men comedians, they low-key, high-key, vicariously live through these crossy dressing sassy black women characters because they know in their original form right they can look like this play this do this but when they cross dress as a black woman that's them secretly living out their fantasies of wanting to act like that wanting to see how it feels to wear heels and wigs and makeup and dresses and certain outfits because with the tyler perry clip i showed y'all if y'all watch that movie on netflix that whole scene where he dress and acted like Beyonce performing at her concert, that had absolutely nothing to do with the movie. So it's kind of like you just added that in just so you can really live that fantasy because that's what you always wanted to do. Because if you really think about it, it's like, what was the point of that? I've been thinking, I've been thinking. I even want to bring this discussion onto social media now where you'll find a lot of comedians, black men comedians, the most popular ones I've seen, I know some of y'all have seen it too, like I talked about Norman in the beginning. The most popular ones I've seen are the black men who dress up and act like black women. Always ratchet, always having that same type of like black mother type skits to it. And one of the most popular Instagram comedians, blame it on Quay, I'm pretty sure some of y'all have seen him or heard of him. His most popular character is when he plays TT overly ratchet character supposed to be a woman with you know the blue hair i'm gonna show y'all shut up rosa parks and i'm gonna start popping you upside your head if you keep talking to me like that as you can see that was just a clip he made but tyler perry caught on to that and even invited him to be in one of his plays i think his final farewell play Get mad at your mama because she getting that Similac with vitamin D. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait. Oh my God, hold up. And I remember him talking about how that character has almost consumed his life to where when he gets invited to award shows or he gets invited to do brand deals and endorsements, they want the TT character with the blue wig. They don't want Quay. They want TT. Like that character has took over his identity in a way where like when he goes out in public as himself, People want him to act ratchet and act like the character with the blue wig, when it's just like, wow. Like I said, sometimes these comedians, them characters can consume their own identity. And I've seen this many times where some people get so lost in these characters and these caricatures and these cosplays and these cross-dressing characters to where sometimes they forget that it's a man. Like they get so lost in the character that's like, oh wow, oh, that's Martin that played Shanene. Oh, that was Eddie Murphy that played one of the clumps or oh, Respucia. <laughs> Okay, you cross-dressing as a black woman, they can't just act demure and poise. You gotta be ratchet, you gotta be ghetto, you gotta have colorful hair, you gotta have, you know. Did you know that that movie came out right around the same time that Eddie Murphy was trying to campaign to be an Oscar winner where he did Dreamgirls? Now, there was a high chance that he was gonna win that, right? But many speculate that because Norbert came out around that same time, that made the Academy look at him in some type of way. And they just, you know, he got nominated, but he didn't win. What y'all think about that? Like the Academy even looked at Eddie Murphy. It was like, oh, we gonna give it to this one over here. You still get the nomination, but you're not gonna win. Big Mama House 3, I wanna talk about this movie. Y'all know the actor that played his stepson in the movie, Brandon T. Jackson. This is the movie where it's like, I think it was like like mother, like daughter, like son, like something like that, where they had the stepson cross-dressed as a woman too, along with Martin Lawrence as Big Mama. And don't you know, I seen an interview where Brandon T. Jackson said, after he threw on the dress, he felt like his career went downhill. He got blackballed from Hollywood. Cross-dressing as a black woman in Big Mama House 3 hindered his career in some type of way. When you really break it down, it's kind of like a lot of black male comedians, when they cross dress as black women, they get more success from it than they do criticism. Now that I'm seeing all this criticism, I'm like, where was all this criticism when y'all was selling out those tickets at the box office to where they can create franchises like Big Mama House and Medea and Professor Clump and Nutty Professor and Norbit 
all these movies, they would not have invested and made these movies if they thought that these characters were going to flop. Even with Jamie Foxx and Wanda, Martin with Shanene, on those shows, they tried to introduce new characters because, you know, Martin and Jamie Foxx love dressing up as different characters, but those characters of black women, the Wanda character, the Shanene character, overly ratchet, overly ignorant, you know, considered to be unattractive, ghetto, ratchet, they were the most popular characters. You look at the Martin show, the Shanene character was the most popular one. And Lemme Color, out of all the skits, Wanda was Jamie Foxx's most popular skit. So it's kind of like, why do y'all think so many people find it entertaining when black men cross-dress as black women? More than likely in a negative light. Portraying, overly exaggerating these negative stereotypes. Why do y'all think these characters become so popular? You know, some people on black Twitter now all of a sudden, it was always offensive. They never found it funny. But, obviously some people find it funny. The people on social media, the black men on social media that do these characters, they get millions of views, they got millions of followers. Tyler Perry, Martin Lawrence back in the day, Jimmy Foxx back in the day, Flip Wilson back in the day, they became so popular and so rich playing these characters. How do y'all feel when y'all see black men cross-dressing as black women? Whether it be an Instagram comedian, whether it be a new Badia movie. Back in the day, if you watched the old Martin episodes, old In Living Color episodes, Nettie Professor, Norbit with Respucia. How do y'all feel when y'all see these characters? Have you always found it entertaining? It's just entertainment? It just shows their range as a comedian? Or do you think there's some underlying issues? Do you think it's offensive? Do you think it perpetuates the negative stereotypes with black women. I really wanted to hear other people's opinions on this because seeing that conversation on black Twitter, I was like, wow, really? After all these different characters, how much money, how much popularity y'all gave these characters, now all of a sudden, so many people have a problem with it, but I'm like, y'all was laughing and bringing in them ticket sales when they was in the movies and in the theaters and on TV. Now, it's such a problem. What do y'all think about when black men cross-dress as black women for laughs. Why do y'all think that's such a common theme with the writers' rooms for so many of these shows to have black women seen in that light? And if it's not actual black women, they get black men to cross-dress as a black woman with the overly exaggerated stereotypes of them. What do y'all think about this? Please, let's get this discussion started. I can't wait to read your comments and interact with y'all. I know a lot of y'all gonna have a lot to say. Please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.